Hey, this is Doug Stanhope. I'm coming to Phoenix for the All Things Comedy Comedy Festival on Thursday, October 26th for a live recording of the Doug Stanhope podcast at the Orpheum Theater. But I'm not crazy. I'm staying for the whole gall dang thing. Go to allthingscomedy.com to get your tickets now. 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 <laughs> You're near the wild with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Hello, is that you, Becker? Yeah, that's that's me. Okay, no, it's so so far so good. I feel like I feel like I'm talking soft, so I don't break the internet connection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, John, oh. <laughs> still dialing for John. We'll see, okay. We'll see what happens. Okay. Can it handle two calls? I don't know. We're going to see. This is a very inexpensive room, but a nice place that we're in. It's the Monte Carlo Motel off the... Uh, Any connection to Monte Carlo at all? Uh, the, the gentleman, Monte Carlo? <laughs> is that a guy, Monte Carlo? I don't know. Yeah, Monte, Monte Carlo's this is, is where you're staying. This, we're, uh, we're like in a hotel row... Uh, outside of Orlando, about 10 miles from Universal Studios, which is where we're headed tomorrow. But that's, it, that's where they filmed Scarface. Yeah, <laughs> this looks, this looks like the place, but it would, it would have, they could do, they could have done the, the scene here in the room, but the outside shot would definitely have to be Miami. This does not look like that. Although it is powder blue. Yeah, they just did the chainsaw murder in the shower scene. In yeah, yeah. Place. But they, they, uh, this place really is, I mean, Becker, you've, you've done enough traveling. When you see $55 yeah. hotel room, it better be. Yeah. And you go, what's the cat? Yeah. Yeah. You're, there's the something, cat? but honestly, all the reviews were good. And the, uh, the furniture is, I mean, it's not, it's not like they took the pictures like 10 years ago or like took pictures from some other hotel and put them in there. This place has been redone and it's nice. And all the reviews were, were good on Yelp. So $55, $63 with tax and everything. And we're four, four miles from Gatorland in Orlando. Oh, that's fantastic. So, I mean, not with high water, you wouldn't want to be that close. <laughs> no, you, like know, that. you don't want to be. But it, it looks, <laughs> you're two miles from Gatorland right now. <laughs> By the Gator swims, you're only a mile and a half. So, uh, yeah, we're, we just got off the road from, uh, well, the tour's over and we're in, uh, Orlando, which we were in two days ago, three days ago. That's, <laughs> That's great. So tour was fun. Looked like it was, uh, enjoyable. Yeah, we did, uh, what we do, Tracy, 6,900 miles? No. How many miles, how many miles did we do? Oh, let me look at my phone. I have it on my phone. We left, uh, Bisbee. How uh, many steps? How many steps? <laughs> how many steps did I take? We left Bisbee, uh, 15 days ago, 16 days ago. And we drove, oh, a total of 2960. Those are the miles to, to West Palm. So we basically went east and then south. And we've got 2600 miles, 2200 miles home to Bisbee. There you go. Yeah. That's the perfect, the perfect grind right there. Yeah. You get all the souvenirs you forgot to buy on the way in. Or you go back to where you want, where you saw something. There's something coming up. We got to look it up. It's a, uh, it, I think it was, uh, Infinity Space Park or something. And it's, it's a part of NASA. I got, I got to look it up, but I, I'll look on my, my route and I'll, I'll be able to find it. But I know that I would stop there because it's a space museum connected with NASA. But then right after that, off this highway, there was this huge lot, like a surplus lot, and it's movie sets for sale. So, wow. Yeah. So that th- hit the brakes. I, d- we couldn't, but we were, but, but right after that, I did a mental note of like, what's near here? And then right after that was the space center. So I'm like, that's it. I'll look for that and then I'll find the movie lot. Cause, cause I've been to one of those before in Hollywood where the, they had a warehouse full of shit that when they clear out big warehouses for on movie lots, cause they keep stuff for a while. And then someone, right. like, they change hands or some of the top goes, clear out those things. They get rid of a ton of shit. And you can get things from old movies that way. And, uh, th- the one we went to had some taxidermy from the Adams family and, uh, just cool shit like that. And some of the stuff, you know, uh, may or may not be from it, but 
this place was huge, and it was high ground, so nothing's water damaged. So I'm gonna try and stop there. I wonder if they got James Dean's wreck. James Dean's wreck car. I think that would be a high dollar ride, Becker. Do you know who killed James Dean? Well, he got in a car. Not excessive speed. I get it. Yeah, but uh, no, uh, he was killed by a guy named uh, what's his name? Ronald Tumbleweed. What? I've never heard that. Yeah. Who's Who's Ronald Tumbleweed? I just I was looking up the crash, and then no, he's the guy who went past two cars on the highway, and it's a Y intersection. Then he went to turn to go because he's going around two cars in the other lane, uh-huh. and then he said he just go straight on the highway there, and James Dean was shooting down there about seventy five and hit T boned him, and that was it. That was they're done. Wait a minute, his but name with, his name is Ron Tumbleweed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I just thought it was funny because I've never heard the expression, you know, hey, you're like a tumbleweed. I, I, I wonder if that came from killing James Dean. Uh, I've never heard that name before, though. You figure you would hear I've that name. I've never heard it. I could... You look for those things. It was though. just, yeah, it was very odd. So what have you been up to? Uh, been uh, busy, busy, uh, and uh, saw a uh, bear, saw a bear, full-size in, bear. In your yard? Uh, up the street, up the street. All right. So and it's then in, the, saw in your links. in your uh, you saw a bear in your like that 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 cul de sac development you live in. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, we were driving up right there at the corner there. The actually the busy street. Uh, I'm trying to think what. Uh, you know when you go up to Lake Otis to go to yeah Northern Lights. Yeah. You, you turn turn, you turn right there from the park. That's like Probably towards the airport. Four hundred the- pound black bear goes hauling across the street. Wow. Stops. Looks. Keeps going. Runs down the hill, and you're just like, God, that's amazing. That really is. When I saw a bear in Alaska, the I think the only time I saw one that wasn't behind Chain Link was when we were going out to Girdwood. We're just about we were just about at the birdhouse, the old birdhouse, and it went running. It was in the uh, summer, so everything was green, and there's I mean there's people rollerblading on that uh, that trail that goes along the highway there, and uh, on the right is the trail, and then it goes into the 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 water there that the portage the portage inlet there uh, uh this thing went across from the mountainside across the road and it looked like a man in a in a bear suit like running on all fours that's how weird it looked right that's kind of what happened to me as i went it, clearly i mean that big a one you you know it's not a dog you know it's not yeah and then all of a sudden it just dawns on because you at first why do you always think it's a guy in a bear suit? I don't. It it's just like, they look a lan- guy in a bear suit. They look lankier than than you're led to believe. You're used to seeing them like all uh, like pear shaped, right? That's what that's right. the way I always think of them. And and even when we were at the uh, the in Colorado at that uh, wildlife sanctuary, they had that classic bear. You know, hey, you need to hit the treadmill uh, lower half, kind of big pear shape. And the one going across the highway, I mean, I, the first thing I thought it was if someone was fucking around, I thought it was a guy in a suit because it was so lanky and uh, the legs were, were were longer and uh, thinner than I ex- expected or would have imagined. Yeah, right. crazy. Yeah, but yeah, so the bear and then a lynx, a lynx in the back. He was, uh, I thought it was a cat on the fence. So I'm going, ah, it's a cat <laughs> on the fence, no big deal. Hello. Hey, there's John. Oh, my God. <laughs> We were just telling stories of uh, of uh, wildlife. Uh, Becker just saw us. Wildlife. I've been seeing ever since they've been shooting everybody. And there's more wildlife coming back. <laughs> they feel like they're not the targets anymore. It's safe to come yeah. out. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. It's a goddamn zoo without walls. <laughs> oh, I see you have your friends with you, John. Always. Yip and yap. <laughs> John, who killed? Who killed? Uh, who killed uh, James Dean? Who killed James Dean? Yes. I had to uh, look it up because I had the name wrong. <laughs> Por- Porsche. Porsche. No, that's that would be the first clue of your safety bug guy. But no, it was an accident. But the guy who hit him was uh, who ended up just getting a bruised nose. I don't even know wow. how far up your ass you have to be to do that. But uh, his name was Donald Turnipseed. That's, that was Donald Turn- Turnipseed, of course. Turnipseed. I and that's why I said expression. What are you, a turnip seed? I thought you said tumbleweed. <laughs> I thought it was tumbleweed. Then I got to question my own facts because, you know, I like to be very accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and then I, I looked up and it turned out it was Donald Tumble or Turnip Seed. <laughs> like, see my fuck. Hey, Chase, nice. hold on a second. Well, just the idea, he killed like a 50s legend. Like, Chase, are you online? Yeah. Okay. I just lost, I just lost both of them. <laughs> We're back. I'm here. You're back? Yeah, I, I've just, I, I, had, I had some windows open and I shut them all down because it sounded like the internet connection is degrading a bit. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm having Tracy, I'm having Tracy turn off her, put her phone into airplane mode. My put my phone into airplane mode. I think we're clean. If next, I'll just have to go to next, next door neighbors and ask them to please turn off their internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to ask you once. I'm all, okay. It's, it's really, it's taking one, it's taking one word that you say, Becker, and like stretching it like silly putty. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's just, that's, that's what it sounds like. I'm just saying. We could do that. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you need to speak, speak real fast. Can you speed it up in (laughs) post-production? I can probably do that in post. Yeah. <laughs> so you're out. Are you, are you still in Florida? This isn't going to work. I'm still in Florida, but hold on a second. Let me see. I'm going to have to do something here, guys, because the, the connection is really fucking shitty. I'm going to see if I can use my phone <laughs> and do uh <laughs> Every time I say something, you guys go offline. I, you disappear. Mm. And, then, and then when you come back... It's uh, it's garbled, which you know, I, I don't, I don't know what that's gonna sound like. Let me see, just give me a second here. I'm gonna try and uh, connect to my phone and use a a hotspot. All right, this would be great if you were using it for like, like if you had a kidnapping suspect and you were trying to get the ransom because yeah. the third, the when the <laughs> FBI tries to listen, it would break up the call. <laughs> like, God, just you, Greg. Otherwise. As soon as FBI John came on, boom, done. We were joking about, can it handle two phone lines? It's like, nope. No. All right, hold on. Okay, you guys keep talking. That's all right. They're this really is good. Can. This is good. Keep him. I need you to I keep like, him on the line. Becker, yeah, yeah. Becker, I need I you to keep you John on the line. Negotiate a, a ransom with a bad connection. <laughs> <laughs> Did you reboot yeah, your router? On the line. I, put, I put the money in the... <laughs> Okay, hold on. Which in which order did you disconnect the router? No, see the the Wi-Fi is supposed to be in series after the. What? Okay, I'll hold. I'll hold. <laughs> <Call it good. laughs> Look, see, she's. I'm gonna send you her ear if I don't get that ransom. <laughs> hold on. You know what? Let's just kill the kid. Let's take it as a loss. Let's kill the kid. <laughs> I need you to wait three seconds before you plug it back in. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm turning it off. See if you guys are still there. You still there? Yeah. Oh, they are uh, I think that's going to work. Is it working? That's working better. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. Yeah. Kind of amazing. All right. So, yeah, I think we're going to be able to save your kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, now I'll tell you where to make the money. <laughs> I'm a little short. <laughs> <laughs> How much? We got the connection now, but I'm I'm afraid they uh they did cut off her hands. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Next time you should have got with, gone with some net gear <laughs> or the new arrow. <laughs> Do it. One of those things we have to use the phone like an automated call for a ransom. Yeah. Press one for <laughs> amount. <laughs> If you have the entire amount, please press. No, first of all, it would be to continue this call in Spanish, press numero dos. <laughs> then it would ask you if you had all the money. <laughs> Do you have more? I think these. <laughs> I don't know who grabbed your grandkid, but it sounds like they're pros. <laughs> they do this all the time. So, uh, I, what, you saw the, the animals. You saw, well, you saw the, the, the bear, Becker. Yeah. You saw the bear and while you were driving. The- it wasn't in your yard. Driving. No, that one's running. Well, it's running from our yard. It yeah. is, so I was a little nervous on that one. But So then he took off. And, then, and I, so then I'm home. 
at night and the sun's about to set. And I'm like, oh, and it looks like fall. We're going through a real fall, aren't we, John? It's very fall. It's fall. This is real fall. All the leaves <laughs> are different colors. Even the ones that are still green are different green. It's exciting. Hmm. Well, and that- uh, there isn't even snow, like, really creeping out of the mountains yet. So we have, like, another, like, couple weeks of fall. It's a very exciting time for us. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about going on Pick Your Own Pumpkin. I want to do that, where you pick your own pumpkin. Go to the pumpkin patch? I don't know. Just Is wherever. Local patch? family <laughs> garden. Yeah, there's a local garden. I think you guys got some. Yeah, people grow pumpkins out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I just found out that the city does like a haunted forest thing. All right. Uh, <laughs> Is that the I'm, homeless camp? Yeah. yeah, yeah I think it's, you it's can call it whatever you want, but let's be honest. <laughs> And they're doing it uh, this year, but they're doing it. Uh, I'll be gone. I'll be in. I'll be in Arizona. Oh, well, I'm, damn I'm missing, it! I'm missing the one good haunted house, and I don't know if it's even good. So oh, I maybe I just. Bet. You hey, you guys, the, the the one might be open in uh yeah in uh, Phoenix. There's a there's a big haunted house that uh, we have uh, we have connections to. Tracy, what is it? Fear Farm. What's the big one? Yeah, there's a big outdoor one that has uh, six haunted houses and a hayride, and it's uh, it's it's in like a. I, t- I told you about this last year. It's in like a carnival set- setting where they've got you know uh, elephant ears and turkey legs and all that stuff, and uh, it's in the midway. Turkey leg. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, you guys, we'll be out there for that. I just realized oh, that. Yeah. yeah, that's brilliant. So you're missing that there's one, also- John, but this one will be. Uh, this one, this I, be I dare say, will be uh, um, more on a uh, professional level. And I'm not going to just step on your feet here, Greg, but did you think they would close for Halloween? I forgot the date. I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think somewhere around Halloween. Valentine's Day, they might be a little off. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> the blood off the turkey legs. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we'll, we'll have to uh, set something up in advance on that one. But, yeah, that'll be great. So we're doing it. So, John, you're coming out. So, I've got tickets. Yep, he's doing it. He committed. I will be in Arizona. All right. So, I'm, uh, I'm following. I'm following the Beckers down to Bisbee. Yep, and then traveling back up to Phoenix for the uh, for the comedy fest. It's the uh, well to fill everyone in. It's the All Things Comedy Comedy Festival. It is October 26th through the 29th. Uh, Bill Burr is recording a podcast. Uh, Doug Stanhope, the one we're with. Uh, Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. Burt Kreischer's Colin Sick to Work show. Doug Loves Movies. The Bodega Boys with De Sus and Mero. Guys, De Sus got- and Mero. They're my favorite. I am very excited to see them. Well, You're I- not really supposed to say that. Say <laughs> well, no, this like is, that's the thing is we. Uh, nope. Ours is – it's in Phoenix. It's at the uh, Orpheum Theater, and ours is on the 26th. We get ours out of the way, but we've got an Airbnb all weekend out there. So we're going to be actually doing podcasts at the Airbnb and then crashing these other ones. Like Burt Kreischer's Calling Sick to Work is uh, kick-ass. It's at like noon, and uh, a bunch of people just blow off work, come in, and get drunk. So – that's uh, that's one we're going to check out for sure. And then you know, sounding qualified. Uh, Ari Shafir, skeptic take. Uh, of course, I don't know how we're going to get into Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast, but we'll see what we can do. And it's, it's a whole weekend, so October twenty sixth to the 29th, Go to standuplive dot com. Hit the Phoenix button because there's two different uh, locations for Stand Up Live. Hit the Phoenix button and uh, go check out uh, the twenty sixth. Get some tickets to come out and see the Doug Stanhope. Live podcast with uh, are those all at are those all at the theater? They're all playing okay. over the the entire weekend. There's a bunch what of is podcasts. It locations? Uh, I don't know. Okay, because that theater is beautiful. Yeah, know? yeah, it's a, it's a huge theater, and uh, uh, every night there'll be something there. The yeah. Orpheum, right? Yeah, the Orpheum. Yeah, like twelve million dollar remodel just went into it. And then uh, yeah, we'll figure out a way to peel off and head over to the uh, the haunt as well. That'll be a kick ass weekend. That will be fantastic. Yep. Does that sound fun, sound fun, John? That sounds like the most fun I've ever had. Let's do it. <laughs> It'll be good. <laughs> so uh, I, right now, I, I, I'll just – I don't know what you guys want to talk about, but I'll just fill you into what we're doing. We're going to Gatorland tomorrow. If you have a chance, check that out. Uh, it's uh, They've got a huge albino gator. I went there uh, probably about 15, 20 years ago. Uh, we're gonna, they've got the snake shows, the gator shows, and all that stuff. I'm not really down with the gator shows, but I do like seeing alligators. And that's why you think they abuse them? Well, they make boots out of them. Yeah, they got boots. Well, I don't think they kill the ones there. 
But they do. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like a lobster tank where you can pick which gator you want your boots from. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would that would be interesting. You gonna wait or do you want to just to send them to you? Are you gonna make a boot right now? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> what's that squishy noise? I I got boot. That squishy noise. I don't know, but uh, I I got boots while you wait. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great but the other thing we're going to do is we're going to halloween horror nights at universal studios we're down here it's a i guess i could be a business write-off because of my brother's company ghost ride and uh, halloween horror nights is basically eight uh huge mazes that they have at uh universal studios in orlando so uh that's that's our our end you of trip guys. fun so I, think, I wonder if the Gator Park, if they stamp both your hands. <laughs> yeah. Like, just in case there's an accident later, and they go, yeah, that's the Gator. Yep, that's the stamp. That's yeah, him. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> he took it. <laughs> it's still clutching a marshmallow. We said don't feed him. <laughs> yeah. You kind of broke the rule. Read the sign. I do remember when I was here last, and I hope they do it again. They have a, a like a little pulpit that comes out where a guy will stand. He's got a wireless mic, and he's talking to the crowd, and everyone's surrounding this this pit. And you're up off. You're about ten feet off the the water, and all the gators are down there. And he's got a, uh, he's giving a, a demonstration. He's talking about it and need a little history of what's going on. And then he'll, he has this pulley, like a clothesline that you can like, like sh- shimmy stuff out over the, uh, the pit of gators. And he puts on a whole chicken <laughs> and it's hanging down. And he, he, uh, kind of shoots that out into the middle of the thing. And the gators will, uh, they'll use their tail and, and, uh, just swish and get right up in there. They'll get like, you know, three quarters of the way out of the water. It's pretty awesome. Hmm. How 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 big are the? What's the average size of a gator over there? I don't know, man. Because because I mean they've they've got a ton of them, and I do remember last time there was a huge pond all by itself uh, on one side of like the uh, the attraction area, and there was this other one. My brother and I went walking down the whole length of it and came back. It's about as big as a soccer field. And we're coming back and we're like, what the? There's only that fucking thing in the middle. What is that? And it looked like it was an old sculpture or something. Of a but submerged. you knew it wasn't, right? Well, that's the thing. We didn't know, but it looked like if, like if someone had made like a concrete, uh, like a, a alligator and made it like grossly big, and then it its top jaw broke, and then they did a shitty patch job on the top jaw. That's what it looked like. Because it was, I mean, these are fucking prehistoric animals. So we were like, ah, fuck, there's nothing in here. We walked all the way down, walked all the way back, there's nothing. Then this fucking thing swished its leg and threw this rooster tail that was, it was like no fucking way. It it looked so big, it didn't look like it was real. And then it had this fucked up mouth that it didn't look like it was real. And then it splashed like it was, like, like you just dumped a safe in the water. It was fucking huge. So I'm hoping that, that there's no way that could be there. That'd be 15. You hope he's still alive. I hope that'd be awesome. Right? That would be awesome. Yeah, scared the Apparently, fuck out of me. With my uh, fact checking abilities, I just learned the American alligator can live between 30 and 50 years. Yeah. So there's a good chance it's still there. Well, that was like, like that's got to be 15, 20 years ago when we did that. Well, yeah. Maybe he's gone. Yeah. Well, maybe, but they're all growing, right? <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. there is a yeah. there is a it's white one the there. Same. You know, Greg, you get attached to one gator. It's not the same. Yeah, you know, you you pick your favorites. It's like kids. You pick. You know, everyone you says you like them all the same, but I, I can your tell. Kid, your pet gator died, and then your parents got you a new gator, but you knew it wasn't the same gator because because the new gator bit you. Well, it, the, you used to be able to buy caimans at a de, like a like they called it Zodi's was a, a department store in Southern California, and uh, or Gemco. It was another one, and you could buy turtles there, and you could buy small little caimans. I remember. Yeah, we had a pet caiman when I was in high school. I had one, and uh, yeah, it, I will tell you what though. The only thing is, you got to feed them crickets and weird shit. Yeah, and they got to they got to eat live food because they don't eat dead stuff. Yeah, but boy, their wastewater smells like pure sewage. <laughs> There's a reason why they're all scaly. We, we went to a party in uh, La Habra Heights in Southern California one night. This is like in 85, 86. And uh, 
we were we were roading for this band and we used to do house parties. I remember we went into the fucking bathroom and there was a fucking like a three foot caiman. I mean that's the tail too. The, the tails are like a foot, but it, there's like a three foot caiman in the bathtub and it's like you, you can't fucking clear out the alligator before a party. <laughs> you just you keeping it in the fucking bathroom. I mean, well, he used to be in the fridge, but <laughs> <laughs> we're having a party. Put we're it in the tub. We need room for the beer. Can't put a fucking gator in the fridge. Three feet sounds small, but I think that's big enough to like snap off some body parts. Well, that's 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 the the gator. You know his his snout and his tail are touching both ends of the tub. So, like especially if you're if you if you're peeing next to it, I don't know. I would. <laughs> yeah, that was that <laughs> was where you don't lie about uh, anything. Well, we didn't know the gator was there, so there was very little peeing when you opened the curtain and <laughs> you looked down. I would have peed. Yeah. Any chance I can get in the pool first? I need shrinkage <laughs> on this one. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but I thought Becker would be very interested in the Go Fly Prize. That is a prize. Uh, of up to $2 million to design and build a quiet, ultra compact personal flying device capable of flying 20 miles while carrying a single person. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. It also has to be safe. That's where I think they might lose you. But I think that's where they lose a lot of people because, <laughs> you know, by the time I'm 20 miles away, you know, OSHA's not keeping up with me. So this has to be. What's it? 187 days. What's a near VTOL personal flying device? What's VTOL? No idea. No idea. I skipped over it. I figured if I don't understand it, it's not important. But it, it's not like you can't get a bunch of balloons in time to a, a beach chair and go, see, I did it 20 miles. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is like, yeah, this I is just... like they, like you show up with your non V, V, near VTOL, uh, uh, device and they give you a map and go, you need to go this way. And land it twenty miles away, so you don't know yeah, they, where you're going to go. You don't, you're not you're not using the headwinds. They did put a lot of that car dealership wordy stuff at the end. <laughs> didn't <they>? Yeah. <laughs> so who's doing this? Uh, it's sponsored by Boeing. Oh, have, Boeing. Have they run out of ideas and engineers? What the fuck? Yeah, are they the same ones trying to keep Canadian jets from coming into our market? <laughs> I mean, if they can't figure it out, why do they want Joe Lunchbucket to figure it out? Yeah. Yeah, they're giving you $2 million. They go, we'd have paid five. <laughs> we'd have paid five. <laughs> We're charging the government 10. <laughs> it's like when they, remember, it's like that whole ripoff where they do companies go, yeah, make our Super Bowl commercial. We'll pay you $50,000. And they go, yeah. wow, it usually costs like a million to make that. And got all these guys working on it but yeah i think that's a good idea john okay we'll start working on that we'll be yeah. down in the southwest not as many trees <laughs> yeah but what would When's you the due date when do you have to 187 days from now uh, that's pretty quick for yeah. something that has to be safe oh hey. well, i mean see people is the last thing you figure out mm-hmm. yeah well yeah, someone will do it and uh you know they'll die 18 miles short of the of the fucking prize money John, you start working on a thing where you drop an egg and it doesn't break, and I'll start working on the flying part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you just like glue yours to his, and then it's done. Well, I went to McDonald's and got about 300 straws. <laughs> I think we've got to line it with the straws. Yeah, yeah, that's a good cushion. Air. Air's a good cushion. It's a bubble wrap. Yeah, bubble wrap was always to give me on that. So I'm just, I just wanted to put that out there. Easy two okay. million bucks. Yeah, Easy. I think that's a swoop. And, uh, yeah, just make it out to uh, Jet Boy. Okay, don't really do that. Use my real name. No, yeah, I <laughs> can't get yeah, yeah, check those Jet Boy. Hey, uh, yeah. last week we were talking about the, uh, the, the crowdfunding and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, some of the things that I, I mean, I, I admitted I bought that one that lounging thing. It was just a big trash bag you fill full of air. Um, mm-hmm. And then <laughs> after I edited the podcast, Something came up and I immediately bought something. And I'm like, I'm just, I did it again. I fucking did it again. <laughs> I bought a pair of, uh, of headphones and they, uh, they're, the, they're the kind that kind of go around the back of your head, you know, so that there's nothing hanging down in the front, but it, it, it loops over your ear, but then it touches like, uh, the bone right next to your eardrum. 
and it sends vibrations, right. so nothing's going in your ear. Oh, yeah. Right. That's what the special forces use, because yeah. you're like I am, Greg. You get sore ears from those damn pods. I, uh, I can't. I got the ones right now. I've got the uh, I have the silicone ones, but then my ear gets really hot because I listen to podcasts at night and I go to sleep. I have the, the sleep feature on it. So then I got the ones that they give you with the, the iPhone, and those it's fucking like putting two acorns in your ear, and now I can't even put them in my ear because it's it's uh, the that the bump in my ear above the ear hole is irritated from that, that hard fucking acorn that I got stick in there. So I saw this thing and I bought it immediately without even looking into research on it or anything like that. So I still, I think I, now these, these are real. Like I've heard of uh, the bone conducting headphones before. Yeah, that's what they are. Yeah. See, I don't even know the name of them. I just went and bought it. Cause I go, oh, that'll be perfect. Did you get them from like, did you, did you get them from like Kickstarter? Uh, no, no, that's the thing. It wasn't a crowd funding thing, but I've seen them on that before. Right. So these, this is, this should be in Bisbee by the time I get home. It's on the, as seen on the internet. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> but you, you've heard of these, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah I, feel, I, feel, technology. I feel a little yeah, bit. You know, that's what the special forces use. They use that. And then, then that's like uh, the girl who just won America's Got Talent. You see, she did her little ventriloquist act, which oh, she was very good. The puppet. Yeah, she's very good, which is funny because then Terry Fader came out on her when the night, the last night she performed, and so did, uh, what's his name, Jeff Dunham. Dunham. And they're both standing there looking at her going, she's like nine and she's doing better than we are. <laughs> I mean, she's kicking ass, she's got original material. Her puppets are all dirty and faded. <laughs> But you know how she's doing it. She's using she's using like a two thousand dollar fucking face mic. What I don't know what that what, what is that? It's a little tiny like what they use for special forces. And it goes right on the corner of her mouth. Well the thing is, all you have to do is just if I went made a gurgle noise, yeah. like a frog noise, it would come out like amplified like you're playing the bass. Yeah. Yeah. So it's then so she what, so what she's doing, she has a she has a super but she's doing it at such a low level that it's not a stress on her voice to not move her lips because you can do it just humming. So she's using like a super sensitive, very tiny microphone. You give her a mic on a stand and that girl's not impressive at all. You're yeah. like, what's the girl from the dolls for? Is she with the band? Yeah. Well, you know, I I remember when we did uh Universal Studios in two thousand and one in uh Hollywood. Uh, we were doing a, a maze, a bunch of the effects for Clive Barker called the Vipex. And there was a guy that they hired that would walk through the maze, full makeup, and he had a microphone inside his mouth or something. It was really, it was like that. It may have been like what you're talking about right here, but you didn't mm-hmm. see the microphone on him and wa- and it's wireless. And as he's walking through the maze, you would be, you know, like, slowly going through and he would come around a corner walking walking through the maze backwards and he would be yelling and he would be through all the PA and he would hear this this guy yelling and proselytizing as he's walking through there and you didn't know where he was and all of a sudden he'd, he'd, he'd be in front of you right in your face and he had one of those mics it was I never even fucking saw where it was and all he would be doing is talking like me right now but it would be booming you know, yeah. fucking amazing If he had only known, he could have won a million bucks. I mean, uh, he's got talent. I think he had more fun in the in the maze. That's the important thing. That's the important thing. <laughs> Hugh Hefner's dead. Could you believe oh, it? No. Finally, yeah. the rest of his body went stiff. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was dead already. <laughs> really, really, he's like one of those guys where you're like, he's still hey, around. If we had to still fuck him, you wouldn't think he yeah, was. That's true. <laughs> There's right like, now, there's two girls going. Thank God, give me my last paycheck. <laughs> do I clear my stuff out now, or do I got until Friday? <laughs> well, see, the problem is he died before nine. Now, if he died at eleven, you got your full day paid. <laughs> <laughs> see, you, you should have tried CPR. Taking, that's a whole different meaning at the mansion. <laughs> uh, oh, that was a, that was a big thing for a while. I don't think that's been anything for quite some time. Did he have like three, three or four different wives? Like not like wives, but like one wife and three girlfriends that were like rotating. They, when they had that show on TV, there was a show about like a reality show 
I think he, and that was a big, uh, a publicity thing where he had, uh, three girlfriends that he was kind of always hanging around one of them. One of them was, ended up going on to do other reality show stuff. What was her name? Holly. Kendra. Kendra was her name. Oh, well, then yeah. there's, there were, one of them was from Alaska. Well, I mean, they, they're just, they're Alaska. interchangeable. Yeah. I mean, you, you see that and you, you look and you go, oh, those poor ladies. And it's like, oh, well, you know, they're getting paid. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it just, but, but that thing was such a huge, uh, Becker, you, you and I are a little bit older than young John here. You, that, they used to have those clubs like throughout the country, the yeah. Playboy clubs and the, the bunnies was a, was a huge thing. It was, uh, yeah, I remember feminists tried to get all over them and they went, well, if you can make $150,000 in the late eighties, yeah, fucking not, not a type, fuck off. And then his daughter was running the company. Mm. He's, I mean, yeah. clearly he stepped down. He's got too much to do. He's got three girlfriends. No. Yeah, but I mean, you knew it was hitting hard times. There was so much competition and everything else. Then they remember when they changed Playboy and they got rid of the centerfold and yeah. they got rid of naked yeah. pictures. Like, and, like, like two years ago, they got rid of the pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They really did. That. Then they brought it back and now they don't know what to do. You're like, we were wrong. People actually did like the pictures. So Just leave it blank and sell paper. I'll, I'll tell you, it, it, just the just the way things change so quickly. Uh, there's a uh, an author, uh, John Ronson, and he's got a uh, a podcast out that's actually produced on Audible as a uh, series. And, just, and I think there's six like 45 minutes uh, segments, and it's about uh, the 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 birth of uh, you porn and just the, the way. The way the industry has changed and the things, and he takes this one through line and he just, he, he just kind of, uh, he goes off on tangents all around it and then gets to the end. It's a very interesting and it's called the butterfly effect. And, uh, it definitely relates to some of what uh, we're talking about here with, uh, Playboy. Well, it's a fact, like yeah. It's, it's, I mean, the butterfly effect, I mean, that, that's, you see that now and every, look at fast food. Taco Bell doesn't even make tacos anymore. They just, <laughs> They're like, it's in an egg, and it's got that, and it's got gummy bears in it. Just eat it. Shove it. They're just, they got a funnel now. They just stick it down your throat when you pull up and go, there, go, next. And the Tap once there, to go, stop. I, I don't want to do this anymore. This is horrible. Well, it, just it, drop tater we, ta- tots. we listened to it in the car the other day, uh, driving on the tour, and everyone loved it. We got it. We actually originally, uh, it was a suggestion from Chad Shank from the Stand Up's podcast. So I'm passing that on. That might be something to listen to. Uh, and it is, it is really interesting. And, uh, the guy's voice can be a little annoying, but he talks to other people. So it's not just him. It's, uh, it's, uh, John Ronson, the butterfly effect. And it's free on Audible. Can't beat that. Yeah. We've definitely talked about the primitive technology YouTube channel on yeah. the show where the guy like, you know, makes uh, a shed out of like whatever they would have done like hundreds of years ago. He, he uses primitive. Kind of, he uses only primitive I, techniques to yeah. uh, to uh, show survival in the bush. Yeah. To make he makes like a, I think he made like a shrimp trap in one and he makes like a, a garden. He makes a bunch of dumb stuff. But there, I found this great video called "Even Primitiver Technology." <laughs> <laughs> Every time you come up with a good idea, somebody will try to swoop you. Yeah. Let me guess. He another guy comes up behind the primitive technologies guys and hits him on the head with a rock. <laughs> uh, it's that's pretty much it. He hasn't quite he hasn't quite figured out what to do with the rocks yet. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send you guys the link right now. Send the link. I'll put it in the show notes. I love primitive technologies. That guy is awesome. And that guy, he never speaks in any of the uh, in any of the videos. He has millions of people watching these things. But he'll do. He'll like build a kiln, and then he'll make the uh, he'll make the the tiles, clay tiles, to put on the house that he builds. That he. You know, shows the, the the techniques of building a house in the middle of nowhere, and then the the clay walls, and then he builds a fireplace, then he builds a kiln yeah. to put on the fucking the tiles on top. It, it, it's pretty amazing, and uh, the guy's backstory is really good too. Check that out. So whenever I watch that show, I start watching it because I'm like, someday when the apocalypse happens, I'm gonna be out in the woods and I'm gonna need to know how to do this stuff. And then I watch it for like two minutes, and I'm like, no, I'm just gonna die. I want to die. No, yeah, <laughs> no. But that's the thing is, you go, I don't even know how he does all that in a day because you go, I spent my whole day watching videos of him working. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't even, These, I got this, no Wi-Fi. I need an update. How do you make tiles? 
this 10 minute video of him making mud bricks is more work than I want to do. Well, I fucking watched how to make towels. I forgot to make clean water. This is horrible. <laughs> or, or yeah, you know, it, there's plenty of things. And I mean, I'm not taking anything away from the guy. The guy's, it, it's pretty awesome. And he's like a, he's like a student of, of uh, primitive technologies. He's a, he's a smart dude who's just trying to keep these things alive and showing the way things are done. But it is one of those things where before we learn how to get these tiles made, we gotta clean some water. I mean, we gotta we gotta learn how to how to get some food other than a, a package yeah. of a, of a yeah, bacon I mean, cotton candy. <laughs> I will admit this is a very nice kitchen, but do you have anything to eat? It is the apocalypse. <laughs> no. Give me seven weeks. I'm gonna make a shrimp trap. Yeah. Yeah. See, you'd be dead by then because yeah. you don't have you don't have fresh water. The shrimp are already bad. I can't imagine a is going to make them better. You're going to be so full of mercury, you can tell your own temperature when you're done. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I, everything is going on in Puerto Rico right now. I don't, I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but you know, even how out- amazing this is. They said Mar- Puerto Rico is out of cash. That's what their new fucking play. What, what, what advantage is it to be a protectorate of the United States if a disaster whips through there and we don't do fucking shit about it? No, but the, 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 I think at this point we just change our number and go away. <laughs> just uh, we do a, a text message breakup with a with a girlfriend we're tired of. <laughs> yeah, we just we just go. Oh, yeah. You oh, know hey. what? This is a bad weekend for us. <laughs> I think there's a Craig. There's actually a Craigslist for sale posting for Puerto Rico right now. If any other country wants to pick it up, very yeah, cheap. I, North Korea will get it. <laughs> Well, why, why does that have to be the option? Why, why doesn't someone just go in there and figure it out and make it a, a resort? You've been there, Becker. I know, but here's the deal. It's full of Puerto Ricans. Well, they're all leaving now. They're, they're getting on the fucking cruise lines and going, I going to Florida. I will tell you the story of Puerto Rico. In, in 1999, we went there. We went to buy a grill, and we were waiting in line. And the people were dancing. I've said this before, and they were dancing and everything. They wouldn't help us, so we had to get a ladder, climb up like what would be a, a library shelf up to get the, the grill down, and yeah. we walked up, and then they vaguely paid for it while still dancing and having a good time. And I went, this is not a country that needs to be rebuilt. It needs to be maybe, redone. Maybe it's your fault for buying a barbecue at a disco. I don't know. Yeah, we should have just sold it from the neighbor like they do in Puerto Rico. Mm. There are passionate people that were trying to show you that maybe instead of worrying about cooking your meat, you should dance more. Well, sure. the Puerto Ricans, you don't realize Puerto Ricans can freely travel to the United States. That's why the Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York is so popular. <laughs> and, <laughs> they, but, well, they're, they're American citizens, so they, they should be able they to should travel. Be able to. They should be able to. citizens. They are they, they are. They, are. they vote in our elections. They're a protectorate, no, but they they're also. Vote. They do not vote in our elections. They, Neither does Guam. Yeah, they do. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> Puerto Rico does not vote in our elections. We they have a representative in Congress whose vote uh, yeah. doesn't count as part of the votes, but they can vote. <laughs> they can vote for Puerto Rico. Yes. They they don't vote in our elections. They're. They're not part of the U.S. You have to be a state to vote in the U.S. That's why. That's the same reason why, why District of Columbia cannot vote. But they have representation. All right. Although the Republican Party and Democratic Party chapters in Puerto Rico have selected voting delegates to the national nominating conventions participating on U.S. presidential primaries or caucuses, U.S. citizens without a voting residence in one of the 50 states or the District of Columbia may not vote. All right, so they can't no, vote, so, but so they do. The they do is, select what you delegates. Told me was they're in the NFL because they played preseason. <laughs> but they do. I mean, they do have delegates to go to uh, to vote yeah, for the, the president. The, the, yeah, the rig. No, not to vote. They go to yeah for in the primaries. Caucus. Yeah, for the yeah the caucus. Yeah, yeah the fake the, the thing fake that Hillary bought. bought. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't it's make sense that, to me. Uh, uh, now, uh, 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 California is going to move their primary date up. They're moving it up three months, so it'll be right during Super Tuesday. Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, because then what you're going to do is you're going to lock in a candidate before half the rest of the state does their primary. So now you go, oh, well, California has the most electoral or votes for it. So now you got to – because they said that Hillary was – would have already locked it in had California not been so late. Yeah. So now they're rigging the deck in front of us. They're going, no, we have to rig it so you don't actually get a vote. 
Well, I think I it, know, we're getting very close to politics the talk. Other part, so. <laughs> I, I got to ring the bell. It might be a faulty system. I understand. <laughs> Listen, I think everybody's doing a great job, and we yeah. all just need to keep hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's funny with the uh, the election that we already had. Now they're going back to people who voted and go, well, would you take it back? And <laughs> can't take it back. It's like, Shane, would you like to get rid of your DUI? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, I would like to get rid of that. You still have to do community service, but we <laughs> – But <laughs> I realize now I should have done it. Yeah. So I, I do have a tip, guys. Uh, right. I'll be right back. I got this dog that's going crazy. Give me, give me uh, one this minute. This is a John question, so I'll wait for you. Okay. Hold on one second. <laughs> When are his dogs not going crazy? No, no, his dog. He brought the the good one. I'll oh. say the good one over, and adorable, Greg. Yeah, it's just this little smart ass black dog, a uh, little chihuahua. It's a chihuahua, just, right? A straight up chihuahua. Yeah, but just halfway between Cooper and uh, Cricket. Oh wow! And just really fun, a young fun dog. He said he thinks the other one's corrupting it. I saw this uh, a, a mix between a chihuahua and a pug, a chug. <laughs> That's great. It has a it has the pug face, but a little bit longer of a snout. It's a cute dog. That does sounds cute. I think that's isn't that Brendan Walsh's dog? Yeah, it's Brendan Walsh's dog. Okay. Yeah. God, that that jacket Brendan wore at the uh, the club where they had the brick background. That yeah, was yeah. hysterical. Uh, Doug was calling it uh, a comedy camouflage. It just looked like a, it, he blended in so well with the brick wall that it looked like a, a a loud tie and a head floating in front of a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, Brendan. Back. I get it. Brendan was awesome Good. on the tour. I haven't seen him since wow, since he was out at Coots years ago and did the show out there where he. <laughs> where he punched that girl's rose. <laughs> yeah. And then and the then guy came back monkey and back. Yeah, monkey, monkey back. Him. Yeah. We were talking about that, but uh, yeah, he's headed out to uh, Washington DC doing a week uh, coming up and uh, maybe see him. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's coming out to all things comedy or not, but uh, we'll see him next time we're down in LA. I'm sure. Cool. Brendan Walsh. The incredible, the Brandon incredible Walsh. Brendan Walsh. All right. What was your question for John? I don't have an answer. Oh, fuck. I forgot. <laughs> I knew this was going <laughs> to... Shit. We started talking about your dogs. Mm, yeah. Oh, oh, John, if you ever yes. get to Texas, there's a, a few of these uh, uh, truck stops called Woody's. <laughs> Why is this a question for me? All right. No, I'm telling you because it, it's a smokehouse oh. and delicatessen, and it doesn't look okay. like anything, but you got if you if you get a chance... You got to go because they have, Woody. they have shelves and shelves full of pickled things and, uh, different. And the delicatessen is wonderful and, uh, it's a full service delicatessen, but it doesn't look like it doesn't have like the, the curbside appeal of like a big, uh, TA or a pilot, you know, it's, it's really, yeah. the bathrooms are amazing and it's, it's just a, a place called it's Woody's. Bar, smokehouse and delicatessen in Texas. I, you know what? As much as I love Texas, uh, I can even order Woody's Smokehouse uh, goods online. There you go. Of course you can. I That's can order amazing. Some, some thick Cajun style turkey jerky. There. Now the thing that we got. How much is it? How much is it? Uh, Thirty ninety five. I don't know how much I get. One pound. That's pretty good for a pound that's of meat. A good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not bad. Well, I got that one kangaroo meat, and that was that cost me thirty dollars for a couple ounces. But yeah. I didn't. I should have checked the price before I bought it. <laughs> Did it taste like turkey at all? It, it was horrible. No, it, it tasted <laughs> like it tasted like uh, game. It's real gamey, is what it was. Yeah, that's weird. I've been to Woody's. This tastes a lot like their turkey jerky. <laughs> not, not, not. Never been to Woody's. Not, not. <laughs> They don't even deliver. No, that was somewhere else when I when I bought that. I bought two. Yeah, that two, was at the uh, Ostrich Ranch, right? No, it was. I bought it at a uh, truck stop, and it was a little <laughs> town. We were coming back from another tour. We were coming down from uh, I think Idaho, Montana run, and I got two things of jerky because I was I was trying to just eat. Uh, was trying not to eat fast food, but then I get you know fucking salted fucking kangaroo, and I think I got. Uh, <laughs> got the, I think I got bison. Taco Bell. 
Yeah, I got bison too, and and the bison was okay. I mean, I know what that is, but the kangaroo was horrible. I think it was fifty three dollars for two small packets of jerky, probably a total of six ounces of meat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah I'll I check saw your price. a boar's head. I almost impulse buy bought like you did, Greg. I was on the thing and I found a boar's head, full boar's head in jelly in a can. Oh. And they would ship, and they would ship, but to Alaska. Oh, by the way, stamps dot com. Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, uh. <laughs> to Alaska, they would ship this, but the shipping was so ungodly. It wasn't funny. Listen, then. no one, you don't get mad at stamps.com. No, oh, really? one, no one should, su- no one should, one should ship to labels? you a head from a pig in jelly no, no, in no, a no, can. No. Don't feel bad about that. Stamps.com, I went on because I got it to ship stuff down to Bisbee. And, and I'm like, oh, well, you have to have their label. They don't say, remember how they say, just pull it up, yeah. sign up, and you're shipping. Oh, as long as you got the labels you have to use. Not well, a big deal, right? Yeah. Well, I'll just order. I'll just order them. Well, I go to order them from stamps.com and guess what those labels cost? How much? $30 shipping. Oh, just for the shipping. Shipping from the place that says they're going to save me money on shipping. I go, you're lying as we're doing it. <laughs> Why can't you just go to the post office? Why do you use stamps.com, you cunt? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to call them, but they don't have a working number. That scared me. <laughs> I think they're out of Puerto Rico. You got to give them a couple months. You didn't. You didn't talk to their uh, customer service bot. I'm sure he can help you out. <laughs> it was crazy. I was just like, "How can you charge me thirty for shipping on a fucking fifteen dollar product?" Oh, like, that, oh, that happens. I do that on on <laughs> DougStanhope.com all the time. <laughs> People buy buy a, a, a patch and a sticker. For uh four ninety nine or five ninety nine and it's twelve dollars shipping. So <laughs> it just <laughs> with me it just happens. No, I at least refund no. it. I answer the phone. I get it. I get it. But I'm just going you're stamps dot com. This is shouldn't yeah. happen anyway, so but yeah, so besides that, then the boar's head in the can was fucking amazing and I was like, Oh, that's just great to have and then I could already hear Becky going, Why'd you buy a boar's head? I go, It's funny. You can have a boar's head in a can. Just don't open the boar's head in a can. No, but that's for that special occasion. Halloween. You know. How big is that can? It's got to be a big can, right? Yeah, that was the thing. It's like, uh, like uh, you, do you ever remember the full size cans of pineapple juice you got when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, a, like, like, like it a, holds a half like gallon. Like one of those metal drums. There were a metal drum where you popped the top and yeah. you lift it. Yeah. Well, this you know, was uh, like that size. You know, they sell uh, whole chickens in cans like that. Yeah. See, the whole chicken thing I've seen, and which is really cool, too. Cause Gross. But it's cool. <laughs> yeah, well, when it comes out, it goes. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. rebirth. It's like. Then the I used, jelly falls. That was, a, that was a selection of uh, of products that I would always gravitate towards when I went shopping when I was a kid with my mom. I would always go to the butcher section. Where they had like that at times they had they had half they would cut a pig's head right in half like right down the middle of the forehead and down the snout and they would they would cleave it open and they they would have that and then uh, I remember sheep's heads they still do that in some uh, ethnic markets where they've got a, a full sheep's head right there with the eyeballs and the and the and the teeth sticking out yeah. and then in, cow's tongue uh, cow's tongue jerky. is always good like yeah cow's tongue is huge that's a, a yeah, horse yeah. tongue. I went to a butcher shop in Germany, and they still had all that great stuff, and they had, like, heads hanging out. And they yeah. had, like, a million different types of sausage. They're, they're way more uh, sophisticated as far as uh, we understand these things are animals that are killed, but they're very showy about it. Like, they'll, they'll cut yeah. the head off of the deer that they killed, and then they'll put it on the platter, and then you're going to have dinner that night. And, and the the head is there with sprigs of rosemary out of its ears, and it's you know the blood wiped from its nose. Uh, it I I guess that's a more sophisticated sophisticated way to look at it, but it is uh, maybe going a t- couple steps further than I'd like to go at, at the dinner table. Well, that's where they hang chickens. It's at the Chinese places. They have dead chickens hanging in the in the windows in San Francisco. And that was a friend told me there. He goes, yeah, you want a good Chinese place? Look for more than five chickens hanging. Yeah. Well, that's, and I go, why? He goes, they go through that many in a day. Well, that, that's I the go, thing is, oh, is that makes sense. We talked about that. We've talked about having duck before because I love duck, but I, I'm horrible at making it. And that's, that to me is the only place to go is somewhere that, that doesn't have it just on the menu, but like they, they make a lot of it every day. That's the best place to get duck. 
And San Francisco is a great, great example of that. Five ducks. So you got Duck the guy's got a USA. five duck. He's got a five duck limit. There's got to be more than five yeah. hooks in the window. Well, usually it goes duck, duck, goose. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> Zing. Zing. Oh, uh, OJ Simpson's going to be out of prison on Monday. I saw that. I'm, oh but my that's, God. In, time, I'm that's in time for him to get a Halloween costume. <laughs> He could go as OJ. Yeah, he could go as OJ. Great. Like, ding dong. He looks just like OJ. <laughs> he looks, he now, OJ. he's old enough now after spending eight years in prison, he now looks like those crappy masks they made 10 years ago that were OJ. He grew he he's grew grown into, into it. it, yeah. Do you think he's out for good? He's out for now. I think, I think, yeah. I don't think they're going to get him on anything. I think he's going to, he's coming oh, to Florida, you actually. Think he's going to be well behaved. I don't know. I think he's going to. I think he was just brash. I think he's, I mean, eight years is a long time to be in prison, man. For, for a guy who uh, ex- enjoyed the excess that he did and the success for so long, that, that had to, I mean, sucks anyway, but. So here's my question Does he come out and is he just like, uh, Poor person now? Like what happened to all of his money? No, he he they could never touch, and that's what they could never touch. He gets seventeen thousand dollars a month in his NFL pension. And they can't touch that. It seems like as soon as he cashes the check, Goldman would be right there and go, I'll no, take that. Not allowed to touch his pension. No, that's a pension separate than any civil action. You aren't allowed to touch it. Oh, wow. That's why instead of 401k, stupid people, you should have kept pensions like the unions <laughs> told you to. Instead, you got rid of them. And now guess what? In the next few weeks when the market crashes, you're going to be broke. And then you're going to whip and you go, they did it again, Lucy. They yanked <laughs> the football. Lucy did it again. Yeah, Lucy, t- Lucy did yeah. it again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I love it. There's a study out that says that half of all abortions around the world are uh, unsafe. I mean, I mean yeah. well, all a hundred percent of them are unsafe for the unborn child. No, that was I was saying. I go, <laughs> there's only half of it that can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed like a weird study. I was like, yeah, well, that, what, does what? that make it like three quarters then? If you do the math right. <laughs> I think that yeah, I mean, what it means is is that uh, half of them were probably performed in uh, dicey operations, dicey, yeah. dicey outfits, uh, back alley style. Or Kentucky. Gingham style. <laughs> <laughs> Becker, do you, eat, uh, do you eat oysters? Yeah, I will. But, I, you know, I backed off since they really they, – they literally do recalls after you consume them. Yeah. They go, yeah, you shouldn't eat. You shouldn't eat. That. The guy at the <laughs> CDC is like, yeah, I, I wouldn't eat that one. John, you eat raw oysters? Yeah. I eat them fresh off the beach so nobody can recall them except. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only <laughs> expert. <laughs> He's like, hey, don't eat those red tide. Yeah, you get all the ones the seagulls wouldn't eat. Yep. We hit the, we hit uh, oysters in, uh, in New Orleans. And I'll, I'll tell you, talk about a proud city. Of of their uh, shellfish, uh, they they they'll tell you like the area. Remember, it was uh, area three was the uh, oysters we got, and they, they were f- they were fabulous. But they, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was the best on the trip going across. That's that was one of the best meals I think was uh, at a place called uh, Pesh in uh, New Orleans. Yeah, I ate it there one in Ohio. You usually don't have <laughs> shellfish because of uh, Becky, right? Right, yeah, no, and it's, it's just it, she's highly allergic, and you know, so I do it out of just not wanting to kill my wife when you can, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, she doesn't have a problem with it. But yeah, it's good. I mean, well, I told you I had those fresh lobsters or fresh whatever they are, lobsters, ocean, shrimp, or freshwater shrimp, yeah, whatever it was in Costa Rica, Craw- crawfish, crawdads, yeah, no, they are crawfish, yes. no, they're freshwater. Uh, uh, Freshwater sh- shrimp. But remember, I sent pictures. Yeah, they're they're like in between a lobster and uh, well, they're lobster size, but they're a little small. But yeah, they were so amazing tasting. I mean, and they're really rich. So you're like going, oh, this is as much as you should probably eat. Is what it was. But yeah, those are amazing. Those are freshwater too. So they don't wouldn't necessarily have iodine in them. But well, we, we didn't test. We've got uh, we've got probably five days. Driving back from Florida back to Bisbee, and uh, we'll try and uh, keep track of some uh, some good meals 
uh, some some out of the way spots. I know the Woody's. That's my tip, John uh, and Becker. I, you you, you head around. You're on uh, Texas once in a while, but you don't travel as much. You just yep. pat blow through. But uh, Woody's is is my suggestion for a uh, a great afternoon lunch and some uh, pickled products or the the uh, looks like the beef jerky is uh, or the jerked meat is a way to go too. I would Great. listen to I would listen to a uh, you know Stan Stanhope crew uh, food podcast like that. yeah it'd be, it'd be like Anthony Bourdain but funny Can't, that's the thing Doug doesn't he doesn't want anything interesting or unique or what's what's uh, what's the local flair so we wouldn't be able to do that could not well, cut him out I'm, I'm just telling you <laughs> he, he would yeah. hate he, he that's, that's listen, he's a creature of habit. It. What would Doug Stanhope think? <laughs> Turn off the recorder. Waste of time. <laughs> That's what he would say. But I'll tell you, we've had some. We've had some really good meals. Uh, Brendan Walsh was into eating oysters, so I always had someone to, to eat oysters with. And uh, yeah, so we we had some interesting stuff. And we'll be at the uh, the Gatorland tomorrow. And uh, that's one way you train gators. Is you Gator cook up burgers. you cook up the ones that mis- misbehave? Do they really sell Gator at Gatorland? I don't know, but if there is, I'm certainly going to eat it. I think they I think they almost have to. That'd be yeah. the only place you know you got really fresh, good Gator. One would hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker, waiting for more links and bears. And I am John Norris, desperately trying not to shake my dog to death. And I'm Gray Shaley in Kissimmee, Florida, heading back towards. Bisbee, Arizona. Talk to you later, guys. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus. Produced and engineered in Bisbee, Arizona by Shaley. (laughs) 